talk about a way to build an argument, okay? Now, first off, you were asked to write an expository essay, not a persuasive essay, okay? A persuasive essay, you're saying to somebody, you need to go out and do community service. An expository essay is, here's why I think community service is important, okay? You're making an argument as to why you think something's important, but you're not trying to persuade someone. So the thing to know is you don't need to be concerned about the reader and trying to get them to go do it. What you're trying to do is explain why you think you're right, okay? So we have other people who try to explain why they think they're right, okay? One is CSI, right? They have, where they have an idea, and I need someone to volunteer to be my um, murdered person. This guy. Dion. I was going to say your name, but you spoke, so now I can't pick you. We're going to go ahead. Let's go ahead and do Chaz, because he's new to the classroom and has never been killed before. No, Chaz, you're just going to sit there and you're going to be my person to be killed. Can someone raise their hand to volunteer to kill Chaz? Chaz, can you pick your killer? <coughs> Who? Oh, Dion. Look at that. Even that great. Although you were quite this time. Great. So let me just, Chaz, is it C-H-A-Z? Chaz killed by Dion. That way I remember when I'm talking who is my murder victim. Okay. So both of these people are trying to explain why, like, who killed whom, right? They're both into explaining. Okay. We don't need to think about persuading or whatever. What, and they're both using, using evidence to do it, right? Cool. Awesome. But how are they different? Don't think about CSI as in a lab. Don't think about lawyers are in a court, courtroom. How is the way they structure their argument different? Yes, sir. Lawyers, they try to like persuade the people in the court that they're not guilty. And with CSI, they're just trying to throw a bit in. Okay. But get out of the lab. Get out of the courtroom and don't talk about persuasion, okay? They both use evidence. They're both trying to say that Chaz was killed by Dion. Both of them believe that, okay? How do they organize their argument differently? How do they organize? Organize is the kind of order where you present things. How do they organize their argument differently? Chaz, do you know? Yeah, but that's, that's evidence. Witness testimony is evidence. Guys, they both use evidence. They both believe that Chaz was killed. Give me a weapon. Sledgehammer. No, no, no. Over a it came up with fun things like spoon. Give me something fun. A yo-yo. Pencil. A yo-yo. What was yours? We choke you with a yo-yo. Okay, what's the difference between CSI and a lawyer? Say it again. Uh, CSI has a thesis at the ending. Lawyer has a thesis at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It is about how they build their argument. So our thesis is at the end. What is the what is CSI having at the beginning? What are they doing? Presenting the most powerful information. What are what is that called? Evidence. 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 Right? We start off with evidence in the CSI world, and we determine, we conclude, right, the thesis, which is that I throw it the wrong, I do raise the wrong thing, that Dion killed Chaz. Where a lawyer comes out and he presents the thesis first. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I will present to you that Dion killed Chaz with a yo yo. And then, I stole the yo yo one, I like that. And then he gives a series of pieces of evidence, right? to show, right, that that is true. Now, what is broad and what is specific? Which one's the broad thing and which one's the specific thing? Big difference because the more specific and the other is the more general. Right, it's the other way around. Why do you think it's the other way around? How is specific, how is evidence specific? Yes, sir. Because 
because you have each individual thing, I guess, thing of uh, evidence, article of evidence, right? Uh huh. But thesis is just saying Daz killed Dion. Uh, uh, Taz was killed by Dion, while, while evidence is like he used this very yoga. This is the specific pinpointed hair follicle of Dion found at the crime scene where Chaz had been bludgeoned by the yo-yo, okay? Chaz being killed by Dion is a broad statement. So the thesis is the broad thing, and the evidence is specific, right? Okay, specific, a pinpoint, ready? Which should be everything on the board. <laughs> FYI. Specific evidence. He says is a broad general statement. Could also be a theory. Because one of these is really scientific and one of them is probably a bad way to do science. Let me talk about which one's which. Proud. Why? I realized I wasn't supposed to say that. Yes, you're going to explain that in a second. Okay. You genius child. All right. Child. 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 Okay. So, in science, what is the way that a scientist should work? Who can tell me? Yes, ma'am. By using the evidence, this is collecting data, right? And then you're able to figure out something. They didn't come up with a theory of evolution and then try to find evidence. They saw some stuff. And that led them to believe. And that led them to believe. Right? They're like, here are, you know, here's this thing and then here's this thing. Wow, and they're similar, but they're different, and they're changing, and they're becoming more like something else, right? Here's how we start off before mammals with these weird creatures, and they're at the very bottom, right? And then the thing on top of them that died later looks like this, right? Or we start off with little, you know, what else? Other examples of the, evolution. Uh, glab it's really the, easy. The glab, the you, you, you start off with, with uh, <laughs> not fish monster <laughs> child, but walking. So you start off so. with two with some dogs, and you get one the smallest male dog to mate with the smallest female dog, and then they have smaller puppies, mm -hmm. and you keep making them smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, right? You're selecting the alleles, right? For the miniature, that's how we have miniature poodles and standard poodles. It's why they're both poodles, right? They were just different ways of them, right? Being being well, um, selected, okay? So when we have our theory. It's best in science to collect our data and then come up with a theory, okay? That's the idea. That's where the idea theory comes from, okay? You don't want to do it this way. We have a theory and you try to figure it out. If you have a doctor and he's trying to find out whether or not something's a good cancer treatment, they do what's called a blind study. Do you guys know about these? Oh, yeah. Where you don't know yeah. the variables. So what they'll do is they'll give it, like let's say the doctor doesn't know which pills are the sugar pills and which pills oh, are something, are, right, are placebo, good, and which pills are the actual drug. Because they don't want the doctor to see all the data and only focus on the data that fits their idea, right? It's because it creates a bias in our, our doctor. So that's why we have blind studies, because this is a more scientific method, okay? Now, the eights that you guys got outside, some of them got these, and some of them were organized like these. Who in this class got an eight on your DA? Was there anyone in this class? Yes. I know, it was really sparse in this class. You guys had a different grader, like your second grader, so it was really, really sparse. Some of them were like this, some of them weren't. This doesn't mean one is better than the other. In science, you want to do this. This is why this thing is done in science. Cool? All right, let's talk about the names for these. Ready? This guy's name? is inductive reasoning. I am not going to quiz you on inductive reasoning. Bless you. 
This guy's name is deductive reasoning. I will not quiz you on deductive reasoning. You will have most likely high school teachers who will actually have you talk like this and you may use this information and actually will talk like this in essays you write in high school. Okay, so these are two types of reasoning, inductive versus deductive. Teachers talk about inductive and deductive reasoning. These terms are actually terms we use. <coughs> when we had you guys, when I had you guys rather, make those outlines and check and see how did the outlines work for the really star passages, I was having you collect data and then I had you guys figure out, oh, this is something to know about organization. <coughs> you figured it out. Right? It's like on front, front, the Friday Grammar where I post up something and I have, I give you data and you figure it out. You might have had it the other way where the teacher goes and tells you this is the grammar rule and here's examples. See the difference? So in education we actually talk about these two things a lot. How are we going to structure our essay? Because it's going to be one or the other. Cool. Looking at your essay, did you do inductive or deductive? How can you easily tell? Where your thesis is. Raise your hand if your thesis was at the beginning. Raise your hand if your thesis was at the end. Now, could there be people that have their thesis at the middle? Okay, this is what I'm going to say, people, at the, the thesis at the middle. It may have been your introduction was too long, you never got to your point. Okay, or you might have done an essay shape like that, which is not very common. But could totally potentially happen. Okay? Now, are those like the essays or those potentially be good essays or that would be probably not very good for a twenty-six line essay. This is something that there are books constructed just like this. Okay? But usually we have where we are either looking at our data, coming up with their answer, presenting a thing and then proving it right. Look over at those four that you guys took notes on for, for uh Tuesday. Go we'll look at those. Who are my lawyers in that group? Who started with that thesis? A, B, A, B, and C. Who was my CSI kid? D. Now, this does not mean this is the thing that will get you a, a four, right? What it means, it was selected. This was not for students, although I use it with my students because I want you guys to learn this. This was for teachers. Because there are teachers out there that believe you have to start an essay with your thesis at the beginning. And Victoria Young, her PowerPoint was presenting to teachers. She wanted to teach teachers a lesson and say, hey, you can have a thesis at the end. And it could still be a fantastic essay. And this is how I like my essays personally, but it doesn't mean I would count off against these essays. Okay, this is just how I think is the best way for me when I write most of my essays. Now here we go. This is going to make me settle. When I was your age, literally when I was in eighth grade, instead of the STAR test, we had the TOS test. Texas Assessment of Academic Skills. And in the TOS test, no, you don't, because you were before you were born. You had guys had tax before. Yeah, that's how old I am. Before STAR. Right? This is how you'll know you're old, is when there no one knows what the STAR test was. Okay? So they're always changing it. Right? So the TOS test. In eighth grade, we had to write a persuasive essay. This is how we had to write it. it. Had five paragraphs. The first paragraph was five sentences long. The thesis was always the last sentence. The body paragraphs, the weakest argument was always in the middle, your second best was at the beginning, and your very best was at the end. Each paragraph had five sentences, a topic sentence, an example, an explanation of your example, and the second example, an explanation of that example. Last paragraph was always five sentences. In those five sentences, you summarized your, your introduction, your first paragraph, your second paragraph, your last paragraph, and one big final sum up. How do you remember that? Because it was drilled into us. Because it was the only way we were ever taught how to write a persuasive essay. Then they're not that is not how you write. That is how you wrote for that stupid test. That was terrible. For us... My job is not to teach you to write for the STAR test. My job is to teach you how to write. So if you've ever had a teacher tell you your thesis has to be at the beginning, who here has? Right. That is not a rule of writing. 
and it's proven right there. And it's proven actually, most essays actually are this. Okay, now ready? In high school, you're going to have a teacher that tells you your last sentence of your first paragraph has to be a thesis. And it has to look this way, and it has to have a colon. Have you ever guys had this before? No. And then after the colon is supposed to be one, two, three. Your three basic arguments and a period. When your high school teacher tells you this, they're telling you what you need to do to get an A. Please do not argue with them and tell them that that is not true and that Miss Johnson, like, said it wasn't true. Just know in your heart, in your mind, that it's not a rule. And just give the teacher what they want to get an A. Okay? Got it? Nod, smile, give them what they want, but know it's not like some weird law or rule. Got it? It's like how you guys were taught, don't start a sentence with because. That is not a grammar rule at all. Right? 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 Okay, so just nod, smile. Yeah, sure, teacher lady. I will give you the introductory paragraph of your dreams. Okay? Cool beans. All right, that's that. Those are the notes. Any questions about this or the rubric or anything else? No questions, no questions, no comments. Do you guys like the little triangles? Yeah. Cool. Do they make you feel happy and fun? They do. The Good. I'm glad they make you, and they remind you of the fact. Triangles are the best shapes in the world. <laughs> right? Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Okay. Where? You know, Pythagoras didn't have Rome, and Pythagoras was Roman, so he only used Roman numerals. Right? Roman numerals don't have fractions. Pythagoras did all his math without fractions. He didn't believe they were possible. Is that interesting? And then he killed a guy who, like, showed that you actually have to eat fractions are real. And, like, it was a whole cult of Pythagoras. And then he was, like, afraid of beans. And he died because he was afraid of beans. Wait. <laughs> a squared plus B squared. B squared. B squared. Okay, ready? Triangle. Yes? Four. Six point five. Right? And you're trying to find C, right? Okay, ready? This is what Pythagoras would say. He would say, because in his world, four looks like that. You can't do this into a fraction, right? So what he would have to say is if this is four units, this would be 13 and 8. Because to him, these numbers didn't exist. These are Arabic numerals. That's why we use Arabic numerals, so that way we can have fractions. I mean, decimal points. So this would actually be, what is it, one, two, three? Is that it? And this would be? Because this is Pythagoras' world. There was no such thing as decimal points. There's only whole numbers. And he did all that math without any decimal points. And he had to just multiply everything however many times he needed to to make it work. There wasn't anything between one and two. Like it didn't exist for him. That and then he ended up killing the guy who like proved that like decimal places had to be real, and like and then he was afraid of beans and then he died. You can write yes, like the food. You guys can write it down. Go on YouTube. Go to Vi Hart's channel about the Pythagorean theorem. She she is awesome. She also talks about fractals. She like does the like she does these cool repeating things with elephants. elephants. I can't do it because I'm not good at drawing elephants. But where's all the elephants go inside the elephants? Yeah, and she has fun doodle games to do in math class that are based on mathematical concepts. She's really cool. I'm gonna tell Miss Collins. Yeah, yeah. She's really really neat. I I highly encourage Vi Hart. She's really really fun to watch. She's got a great channel. All right. Next up. Oh, hi, video.